What's up guys, my name's Tyler, and today I want to talk to you about my favorite camera of all time. No, it's not the camera I'm recording on, and it's certainly not the camera on my phone. In fact, this camera doesn't even have the ability to record. For those of you who haven't figured it out just yet, this is a 35mm film camera. This one in particular is a Nikon F3, which dates back to the late 1970s. This is my absolute favorite camera for a couple of reasons. First of all being the build quality. This thing feels so premium. Now it's not the most portable device, it's super heavy. But the craftsmanship of it and the way in which it functions without fail is just reminiscent of a time past when quality was the biggest priority. I also like the history of this thing. So back in the 1980s, the US Navy purchased a fleet of these to use for military operations. And if you look close, engraved on the bottom of my camera, you can see US Navy. Now when I got this thing, it was in pretty much perfect condition, so it probably never saw any action, which is likely for the better. So why am I talking to you about this when I usually talk about Spain or videography? Well, today is a special day because after a year and a half of shooting film and living in rural Spain, I'm finally going to visit a lab and see what I've captured during this time. All right, so let's go see if we can find the analog cafe. Well, as you might have guessed, not in Spain. It's a long story, but the bottom line is I have left Spain for now. You know, nothing in my life is permanent. I move a lot and I'm excited to explore Budapest. After a year and a half of living in rural Spain, it's really exhilarating to be in a capital city and to still be in Europe. I definitely was not ready to leave Europe. I'm not even sure I was ready to leave Spain but I'm making the best of this new opportunity and it's things like having access to a film lab in the city where I'm living that I'm most excited about. Traditional communist era car, pretty cool. Oh, and how about this wide-angle lens? I think that's an improvement as well. So seeing as I've just left Spain, I've just concluded my time living there, at least for this time. Sirens, oh, it really is a city. It seemed like the perfect time to develop these six rolls of film that I shot while I was living there. Three of these roles were shot on the Camino de Santiago last summer, so I'm super excited to see what I got. And look, I can still get tapas. So yeah, I have a bunch of film to develop. So it turned out to be just five rolls. I got to the sixth one and it was actually unused. So I have a bonus roll to load into my camera. Always a good thing. It's supposed to take about two weeks, which is pretty slow processing, but it's supposed to be really good quality, and I will certainly share the outcome. I also picked up a roll of Portra 400, which is my all-time favorite film. I haven't shot it in years. I'm gonna save that for a special occasion, and I'll definitely be loading it into the F3 as opposed to 
the Olympus X1, which is this compact little guy. As for the price, it was 22,000 for it, or 65 euro, about 70, <laughs> 75 bucks. Pretty damn expensive. Now without that roll of film, which was about 15 bucks, the total would have been about 50, so maybe 55, 10 or 11 bucks per roll of film for high quality development and scans. That's really not bad at all. To compare that with the lab I used to use in the States called the Darkroom Lab, I think I was paying about 15 per roll. So we'll see how the quality is, right? Maybe I can even show some old ones and compare the quality. But based on that price, this is definitely more affordable. However, if you do want to see more film photography, more film photos, and more stories about film photography, feel free to buy me a coffee, which I will either put toward coffee or toward more film. Well, that's all for now, but I'll check back soon.